Hello everyone. I know that we've been a little silent kind of MIA for the past few weeks and when I look back now we haven't put out a video in a month which is crazy considering how much we try and stay on track for these things. Part of that is to do with the fact that the storm that came through on January 10th and ripped apart our tent we haven't been able to repair it yet so everything that used to sit inside of the tent a lot of our tools sandpaper everything is just crowded inside of the boat right now which makes it hard to work around we also have a tarp covering the boat and all of the windows and hatches to keep it dry when it rains because it does leak through we had it the other day a little flooding in our guest head so what we have been doing in the meantime is kind of just like going hard with fairing and priming in a few specific areas to get them ready for paint but we have been told by many of you that you've seen enough of it so we weren't going to show it to you until the next stage of it came around which we are just getting to now which is going to be the finished primer in a few areas and we'll get to that in a second but on the topic of paint if you remember last year when we were trying to blend together some of our seams and since we're a kit boat where the phalanges were bonded together with the methacrylate bonding glue we'll say then they needed to be glassed fared and finally a gel coat was going to go over the top to blend the two portions together. Well four different times we had sent out samples of our gel coat to get color matched. They came back, we sprayed and somehow the hues were just varying enough that you could tell. It was driving us crazy and turning into a big problem. So over the fall when we're contemplating what are we going to do for all of these seams that need to match, we started thinking about other catamarans that we've seen. So back in 2018, when Matt and I were back in the Eastern Caribbean doing the Vuel de Saint Barth, doing Antigua Sail Week, we saw so many sporty catamarans that had these amazing colors on them. I remember when we were anchored in Shell Beach in Saint Barth, there was this really cool, like burnt red, orange gunboat next to us, and I always thought to myself, if I get a sporty catamaran, I want it to look just like that. I'm so in love with that color. And then after seeing images of even like the Max Cruises, a line of them together at anchor, or our friends doing flotillas in the Bahamas, and you just like see these rows and rows of white boats, we thought, do we really need to match this white gel coat or should we be a little bit different and go for a color? Well, thankfully for us, we were at Metz in Amsterdam just a few weeks after that, and we got to talking to Alex Seal, which is just this high quality paint provider out of Germany and we started talking to them about painting our boat. So that is the decision now. And one of the things that we love about Alex Seal is, probably can't really see it on the back here, they have distribution locations all around the world. So let's say that we're in the Caribbean. We can go to St. Martin and give them a color code if we need to do touch-ups and we're gonna get the exact same color there that we are getting here in Annapolis. So there is, gosh, just a huge list of colors this probably won't be for a year that it's going to go on. We still have to get the boat out of the tent. We have to put on those nose cones. We have to do the sterns. All of that needs to be done before we can think about painting and there's definitely not enough room to paint in the tent, but we get to go through this list of colors here and choose what we want our exterior to be. Although we are still gonna keep gel coat in the cockpit and on the cabin sides, just because we do like that durability. We like the ease of cleaning but the hull sides are gonna be something a little sportier. So in the comments, make sure to tell us what you think would look good on our boat. If it's one of these that I've shown in the images here, because I know that Gunboat and Balance do an amazing job of putting these great colors on their catamarans. I've always just looked at them with lusting eyes. So who knows, maybe we go red, maybe it will be a blue or a green. The good thing is we have probably about 12 months to decide that. Plus with the Alex Seal, they do offer the exterior in a two pack paint, which is what we're going to need. Uh, a lot of our interior has been done with Total Boat up to this point, but they unfortunately don't carry that. So we needed to move on to a different distributor as well as a few other things for priming. We're going through our last gallon of Total Boat's high build primer. Uh, it should just be a couple more areas that need to get hit with it. And then we're ready to move on to finish primer, which Alex Seal offers as well. So there's a few areas in the boat that we're gonna go through and paint with that right now to show you. It's gonna be the last stage before a final paint goes on. And the really cool part is that we got it in white. So through the range of colors of primers that we've done before, this is gonna give you the best idea of what the finished product is gonna look like. So make sure to stay tuned and see how that goes on. 
very excited to give the Flexi Sander a try. So right now, this is the aft berth. This is where I'm going to be sleeping. Jess and I are going to be sleeping. So very important that we get this perfect because otherwise I will be up all night staring at the imperfections. <laughs> Just a quick layer of Dicom on here to use as a guide coat to see what this thing is actually capable of and see where our imperfections lie. And this isn't going to be the best test for this because you can see there's already some fiber lash showing through here. So we are at basically the lowest position that the fairing compound and primer can be. Um, but again, I'll just kind of see what this thing is doing and see where the low spots are or high spots are and low spots and see where we need to fill this stuff in. And what makes the flexi sander a bit different is you'll see when I press in here, it flexes to the actual shape. Um, the big idea with it is it's supposed to apply equal pressure along the whole blade surface here. So when it tilts up like that, it should be depressing this area as well and preventing any kind of uh, hard spots. Turn it down for now. Had to take my uh, sweatshirt off, it got warm. So the thing weighs six and a half pounds and you feel it just holding it up there on the wall. Um, it works well. Uh, I could definitely see that it would have saved us time having this. Um, I think I get as good of a job even with my rigid. So what I've been using is a 16 inch rigid board uh, block basically to, to go through and do this. And I feel I'm getting basically the same results even with the flexible part of it. I don't see a huge difference in this. You can see some little bit of that purplish left in it. Now that is just stuff that would get filled with um, the primer. So it's not really anything different than what I'm seeing. This will be a little bit different. I did find here going along this line that there are some actually deeper low spots right here. But that I think is more because when we redid this line, I went through and hand blocked it with a little small one. And I believe that's where I'm seeing those imperfections from. But other than that, I think this is, this is ready for, once we get go through and do the coves again, but I think this is actually ready for the finer primers, something that's more towards the finished primer. Um, just to fill in now my sanding marks. So we'll go through, I'm gonna to touch this up again. We're gonna work that line a little bit more to make sure that that looks good. But I am extremely excited with how this has turned out. Unlike the other areas, this area I probably put the least amount of effort into, uh, least amount of time, and I truly think this is one of the better sections. So it goes to show you. Live it's, and learn. Yeah, well, it's a lot of it is this is the last thing I've done too. So we spent so much time in other areas learning some of the details that going through and doing this, we can definitely see how we built up a little bit of those skills and some of that, that talent, the things that we were lacking severely before. Um, but yeah, very, very happy. Um, the other thing you'll see is we have not done this side at all. I'm still waiting for the temperatures to get warm enough that I can laminate some more of these foam pieces to make the steps, uh, to make 
blast this in to make the ledge here and I didn't want to start fairing this section or any of these other areas until that happens. So I've been just really concentrating on the uh, outboard side because that of course has the curve of the hull. It's got this curve with this line here. It's got all the real detailed stuff. This is easy. This was the difficult part. So we got this hammered out. Should be able to, to do this quick once we get that set up and I'm going to be ready for paint. One of the things I did notice that's an improvement with this is the edges on it are, it's a fiberglass piece that runs the base of this with foam then underneath it. So there's a little bit of flex in there, but that sharp corner, that sharp edge is different than what I have on my board that I'm using. So really where it improves it is when we start getting into these edges and feathering those in, it does a much better job than what I'm able to do with my board. I've actually been going through and using just my hand, my little eight inch, I think it is, uh, flexi sander in that just for those purposes. But the orbital motion of it, I think does a really good job getting into these, these corners and making sure those don't become high spots. This area behind me, not getting primed today, but what I do have sitting here is our Alex Seal Finish Primer. So we're gonna get the very first coat on working down in the starboard owner's hall. So we're going to do the master head and then the one portion of our master berth that has the fairing done. I think that explained why we haven't done all of that yet. So the really fun part about this that I'm kind of excited to is we got the white option. So we keep brightening the colors. I think first we started out with like that yellowish color that we went to the dusty rose, the kind of like buttercup yellow that's on here now, but then this white is really gonna let us see what the finished product is kind of going to be like. It won't be the last coat that goes on, I don't think, but it will be a complete change. So let's get this stuff mixed up into the sprayer and then we can get it applied. Keeping it in a box to try and uh, keep it as clean as possible. I know this don't want to dirty up this tent. Yeah. So both the base and the converter are one gallon containers. It's a one to one. We're gonna go ahead and mix 64 ounces to start. I've got my handy little pour spout on there, which is always very tough to pour the first round. So wish us luck. Finished primer, I haven't even fully mixed it together yet. It's definitely gonna be a bit more watery and fine. there's gonna be anything to sit in the filter. Still going to place one of these filters over the canister. It was it right up. so this doesn't get covered in spray and get ourselves started. Here we go. Let's 
hopefully it goes in nice. Oh, I got a lot of runs. <laughs> well, well, this back. We expected our first time with something so, so thin. So yeah. thin, yeah. Just some more high bulk stuff because this is like super, super thin. Definitely a thinnest product. Stop for just a few minutes to mix up another batch. Oh, I can't really have my mask off for a second, but look at this huge change. So with the one coat on, you can still see that there's a lot that needs to be covered, but this, we'll be doing two coats. Haven't hit the outboard wall here yet, kind of ran out halfway through here. Nice white, bright walls here though. So just looking at the inboard side, going aft, all those walls are white now. It looks so different and amazing. The toilet area. I got just a couple runs, but you know, having that look with something so thin, we're still kind of learning to adjust and spray to it. And then our master birth here. Looking really good for the first coat. We'll get another one on there too. But as Matt was mentioning me in those areas that are going to be white, eventually we might have to switch to a gray primer because it'll be pretty hard once we spray on the final stuff to know what's primer and what's the final coat. So I might have to do a switch there, but it's pretty cool to see what the finished product's gonna look like. Take a look at the finished product. Okay. Master birth, outboard side. Looks pretty freaking cool. It'll be really nice when we can finish that off. The temperatures are raising, so woohoo! That's so freaking cool. It's white. paint in here is still going to be pretty sticky and tacky, so be careful where I stand. <laughs> so this still looks kind of yellow in here, but that's because there's not much natural light, but overall looking cool. And this paint just went on so smoothly. I mean, you can tell, oh. On a few spots, like there's a little run right there, but I mean, otherwise, really nice finish. And it's still sticking under my feet. <laughs> 
You know, this outboard wall here, it just looks so nice. You can see some shadowing in the cove there where it's leading up to where the window's gonna get cut out. So that's still unfortunately needs some more attention. Personally, I think the line that Matt was trying to work is looking really good. I don't think it's gonna need too much more touch-ups. Just imagine my shower head sitting right there. But we're getting there. Oh, it feels good to be back in fresh air again. My eyes were just starting to sting and water and they're so bad. Anytime we do like a primer or paint, it's just the fumes are so toxic. So that's why we always wait to the very end of the day to do it so we can just close everything off and then uh, not have to sit there and breathe it in while we work. But this stuff went on really well. I was just telling Matt that in some of the areas where we don't have runs, because again, this is so much thinner than we're used to working with. So there are more runs than what we were used to with the last one after he had gotten familiar with it and how to calibrate the gun. But in the other areas that didn't have any runs, it just went on so nice. It's become a bit more of a flat finish, but everything is blending together well. Um, I think we've done a good job in the fairing. Some of the coves will have to be addressed again, just little touch-ups with the line. But from this point in those areas, I think we can switch over to Alex Seal's fine filler. And that is just for like minute touch-ups and at least it's a beige color too. So unlike the green, which is very apparent under the white and you have to go over many, many times to cover it, this will hopefully just be um, a couple passes and you shouldn't see it. So gonna let that cure overnight. Hopefully Matt can sand it in the morning with a high grit sandpaper. And we'll just keep working toward other areas to get to this point. But oh my gosh, seeing that white paint in there, like actually getting a feel for the finished product was just... I needed that today. <laughs>